In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Archbishop Rosansky, welcome to your seminary. I know I can, I speak for the priests, I speak for the lay faculty and staff, I, I speak for your St. Louis seminarians and the seminarians from 22 other dioceses that we have eagerly awaited to share this Eucharistic meal with you. Know you are always welcome. You have the code, I'm not gonna say it because we're streamlining, but it should be familiar to you. And uh, please, we want to see you as a frequent guest and uh, we look forward to getting to know you and having you as our shepherd. Thank you, Archbishop. Thank you, Father Mason. It's a joy to be here with you. Thank you for your welcome. And what a wonderful way to begin my tenure here as Archbishop, to come to Kenrick Lennon Seminary and to celebrate this wonderful Mass of the Holy Spirit, asking for God's guidance upon us. As we begin this sacred liturgy, let us now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, to whom every heart lies open, every desire speaks plainly, and from whom no secret is hidden, cleanse, we pray, the thoughts of our heart by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that we may merit to love you perfectly and offer you worthy praise. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption, through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one, know, no one knows who the Son is except the Father and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One day, after Mass, as I was greeting people as they were leaving, a man walked up to me. He said, I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a true story. And I want you to think about it and think what can be done about it. He said, a friend of mine died recently, and I went to the funeral home. Before I entered the parlor in the vestibule, I signed the register, and there were holy cards with the picture of Jesus. He said, I picked the holy card up to remember him in prayer, and a young boy walked up to me from behind, and he pointed to the holy card, and he asked me, who is that? He said, I was taken aback. It's a very, very familiar portrait of Jesus. He said, you have a lot of work to do. You have to bring Jesus to a world that does not even know him, that does not know who he is. I thought about that many times, that little incident after Mass at church. And although he pointed to me and said, you have a lot of work to do, he really meant all of us have a lot of work to do. All of us need to be able to bring Jesus to a world that does not recognize him, that does not recognize him in his church, that does not even recognize a portrayal of Jesus, that does not have that connection with the divine. It's a reminder to us that we are always a church that is on mission, a church that needs to bring to the world that saving message of the Lord Jesus, a world that needs hope. We all know the effects of the coronavirus over these past months. I call it diabolical because it keeps us from one another. It keeps us from gathering together as God's people. It keeps people isolated. And besides its devastating physical effects, 
the emotional and psychological and spiritual effects upon us just go out in concentric circles, affecting more and more and more people. The Lord Jesus, in his mission and in his ministry, brings to us that message of hope. He brings to us that message of solidarity with one another. He brings to us that message of salvation. Here at the seminary, you are being formed to be men of the church, to be men who can go out and with your lives proclaim that Jesus, alive and risen, is still at work with his ministry of healing in our world. It's a message that sorely needs to be heard in our day, in our time. And in this formation, as you learn theology, as you learn pastoral formation, in being able to go out to God's people in different ministries and bring to them through the witness of your lives the presence of the Lord Jesus. As you are being formed, knowing what your talents are and how you can put your talents and abilities to the service of Jesus through his church. As you are able to learn all that you need to be in order to truly be a missionary priest in our country today. You have that joy of formation here at the seminary. It is very appropriate that we gather this evening at the beginning of this seminary year asking for the grace of the Holy Spirit because we can only accomplish the work of the Lord Jesus relying on that Holy Spirit that he has promised to be with us. Relying on that Spirit who permeates the church with such grace that even in a world that is sometimes hostile to the message of faith, we can still be witnesses to that faith. The Holy Spirit gives to us the ability to discern the gifts that God has given to us and to put those gifts at the service of the church so that the message of salvation can be brought to the world. We are entrusted, as we all know, with so great a treasure that we devote years of our lives to formation so that we may know the message that we are called to bring, so that we may be formed as witnesses of that message with our lives, so that we, in following the light of the gospel, may bring that light to others. That is ultimately the work of the Holy Spirit in our church and in our world. As we gather this evening, invoking that Holy Spirit, let us be conscious of the Spirit's presence each and every day. As we're studying theology, as we are out in pastoral assignment, as we discern our own gifts and talents, and as we seek the will of the Lord in our lives each and every day. Our commitment to the Holy Spirit is to allow ourselves to be put to the surface of the church for the love of God and his people. That story really shook me that story that I told at the beginning of this homily made me think that it is not only my mission 
but it's the, all of the church's mission. It is your mission to bring the face of Jesus to those who do not know salvation. It is, indeed, a huge, huge burden put upon us to work for the salvation of others as well as ourselves. But it is a burden that is put upon us that we receive with joy and with hope because of the Holy Spirit. Trusting in that Spirit and asking God to give to us the fullness of that Spirit, we seek to serve Him and His people. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Inspired by the Holy Spirit and united with Jesus Christ, we now humbly offer our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. For the church throughout the world, that the Holy Spirit will stir up missionary zeal in the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Archbishop Rosansky in the Archdiocese of St. Louis, that both shepherd and flock may attend carefully to the voice of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have grown lukewarm in their faith, that the Holy Spirit will rekindle in them the desire for heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all afflicted by the coronavirus pandemic, that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will heal the sick, calm the anxious, comfort the sorrowful, provide for those in need, and protect the vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Kenrick Glennon Seminary community, that the Holy Spirit will renew us in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that they may enjoy eternal life with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, by whose spirit we are governed, and by whose protection we are kept safe. Extend over us your mercy, and give ear to our supplications. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray now, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the spiritual sacrifice placed on your altar with loving devotion, and give your servants a right spirit, so that their faith may make these gifts pleasing to you, and their humility commend them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to her aid, so that with a heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, as with joy we proclaim. you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim thy death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, 
and ready, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed Lord and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Lord, our God, who have been pleased to nourish us with heavenly food, pour, we pray, the delights of your spirit into the recesses of our hearts, that what we have devoutly received in time we may possess as a gift for eternity through Christ our Lord. As we conclude this Mass of the Holy Spirit, asking for the Holy Spirit's guidance upon this seminary year, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Father James Mason, your rector, to thank the faculty members, and to thank all who helped to lift our hearts in such a beautiful way, to praise God for the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of this seminary and the gift of vocation, the call to serve his son. May Mary, who was present at the first Pentecost, be also your intercessor and your protector in all of your days. And may she, who is the mother of the church, always lead us closer to her son. Let us ask now for God's blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and, and pervade them with its purifying light. May God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith. And by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.